uh, of the direction things are uh, taken. Mm. Uh, and if you look at things from a different point of view in the past, you wouldn't trust your neighbor to store your documents and files and say, why would I want to put my backup on my neighbor's computer? You know, you can use it to blackmail me or to share it or maybe something's going to go wrong. Now, there you have this thing that's not even a person. It's a company. It's called Google. And it's run by many individuals. It's a, Essentially, it's a super organism. So it can have all sorts of... Mm relationship with the government of China, government of the United mm. States, and they have their interests. So, obviously, you don't get privacy there, but it's actually worse than that because Google Docs is not so friendly towards open document. And recently, they started to save it as the OOXML format by default. Mm. Mm. Uh, then you consider the fact that while you're editing the file, you're also being watched. So, they might have some logs to also show the way you're working, and from a trend uh, trend from a conceptual conceptual point of view. I, I don't like the fact that people are starting to flaunt the uh, too much, you know, the advantages well, of doing things in real time when in fact there is a company watching exactly what they do, which even yeah. if it's proprietary software, you didn't have that. This is proprietary software, by the way, Google Docs. Yeah. I mean, it, it, like I said before, it, it is a bit of a gimmick and it's got, it serves no real purpose to me at all. However, you know, as with any choice I make, I balance up what I'm actually doing with it and the material that I'm putting through it and my concerns over the privacy. Now, my, in my case, a config file here, a couple of notes to myself as in mm-hmm. just generic notes, maybe links to websites that I'm just pasting in for a show notes. Mm-hmm. You know? That type of stuff, I've got no interest to read that. In fact, if, if it was made public, I would have no problem at all. I would quite happily, if somebody wants to read it, I would quite happily post them as a public file yeah. into the Google. But what if you collaborate? Is, sorry? What if you collaborate with the person? Yeah, or you send him a link to it, and the person says, no, thank you, I don't want Google to know what I'm accessing, what I'm doing. Uh, and that's the problem with the network effect, is actually imposing upon other people the usage of something they don't want to use. I mean, if, if, if it was a question of collaboration and somebody being unhappy, that completely changes things. But considering I don't find myself in that position, I, I make a decision on the on the tech choices based on what I'm handling and what what my needs are. And since I'm not, I haven't got any issues of anything being private. Because like I say, this stuff I can quite happily now just put in public files if people want to read it. Read only access to the public it now. Um, it's very very dull. And it's nothing that's uh, that's unsurprising. Uh, surprising to me. Um, and I haven't come across a collaboration issue which would have a fear with somebody. Um, the, the majority of people I deal with, I think this is where our two circles are quite different because the people that I would maybe collaborate with if there was going to be uh, any sort of I don't know, project of sorts or if they wanted to help with one of the distros that they're sorting, they're not uh, tech savvy enough to have privacy concerns in the first place. They're the people that sign up to Facebook and all the free marketing they can possibly get because they want to be in with a chance to win a washing machine. Um, mm-hmm. So they, they've got no privacy concern. They, it wouldn't even cross the mind. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I wouldn't have an issue. That. So that's why, like I say, I, I, would, I would choose a tech. Now, if myself and yourself were collaborating on something, obviously, yes, the Google uh, Docs wouldn't be a, a suitable a choice for me. Um, again, we'd have to look at another medium. But it's, it's, it's all horses for courses. And at the time, at the moment, I've got everything in front of me and I've got no issues with whatever anybody wants to read of this stuff. It's, it's not secret. So it is very, very handy. Um, mm-hmm. And also, it can be very unhandy sometimes. And I know I'll probably regret saying this because somebody, someone will take the mic out of me. But uh, the other night when I was typing a few paragraphs of just something that was running through my head to stick onto the site uh, as an article, my wife reminded me to come down for my dinner on Google Docs. She got onto my document <laughs> downstairs and she stopped where I was typing and started typing, come down for your dinner. And it was in capitals as well, so she was shouting. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, it might be it might be something for marriages as well to uh, to communicate with your partner when they're on the computer. So, there you are. It does have a benefit for my wife anyway. So, uh, but with, with that in mind, with that... Uh, Just don't stuff. paste the wrong things into the table. Yeah. <laughs> come to the table. Which table? This spreadsheet thing. <laughs> so, uh... All I was there. It was just a, it was a couple of lines that I wanted to fling on, just a, a few witty lines onto an article that I was writing, um, and uh, yeah, all of a sudden it looks like the keyboard takes up a mind of its own. It starts typing up text on the screen, um, sort of ghost style, if you've ever seen the movie where the, the computer becomes possessed. And uh, yeah, 
come down to your dinner now. I've been calling you for five minutes in block capitals. She didn't get around to bolding because I was out the door downstairs by the time. But, uh, I'm sure I'm going to regret telling that story because I'm quite sure that I'll be down as a, a subservient, poor, mistrodden husband by the Microsoft dad. No, no, no. I've, 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 <laughs> I know you personally. No. <laughs> so, but, uh, with mine, though, um, and since I haven't got Google Docs up and my wife can't shut me downstairs, I, we will have to close the show off very shortly. So um, I'll give you your bit if you want to add anything to the end before we uh, retire. I from... probably could play a track. Um, yeah. the, the only one thing I wanted to add was um, people don't realize the effect of using Facebook, Google, Twitter, things like that. Until later on, it's too late. Uh, I, I don't want to go too far with the analogies that use the Stasi in Germany, but in in general, look at Egypt and look at people who are using Facebook for for communication. I mean, the the government, uh, what used to be a tyranny, uh, was going after them first, and and uh, WikiLeaks. Okay, so WikiLeaks was operating friendly and you know exposing corruption in like you know in. Uh, I think it was in Kenya and stuff, and the West was fine with them. It's, you know, good guys fighting corruption. But as soon as they turn into uh, challenging some of the more powerful corporations and, and the way they were interacting with government, then re, 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 retroactively, uh, the subpoenas being sent to Twitter you could look at their conversations going back to 2009, I believe. For several of them. I think it's Jacob Applebaum and uh, one of the, I cannot remember her name, I couldn't even pronounce the last name of the, the one from Iceland. She's an MP now. They managed to pull all the data now. Back in the days, they did very commendable work, even from the point of view of the United States. They, they received many awards and, you know, uh, press awards and all kinds of things. They can go back and find some dirt on these people based on the communication and correspondence back in 2009 to discredit or to jail or to extradite maybe one of them uh, now in 2011-2012 so here you have the situation where people communicating on the so-called cloud uh, in perils and later on so uh, and the same thing that a Google search I'm not sure if you know this but I did some research on it to try to get a summary of cases where the court mandated a company like Google to give the search terms you've used, I don't know, in the past 10 years. I, said, I don't think Google has any policy for erasing things you search for. As far as I know, you could be searching for gonorrhea, and then they know even what medical conditions you might have. But the fact that they, they keep all of that stuff, and you don't think about what effect it may have, and you say, oh, nothing happened. Well, wait another 10 years. You know, maybe there will be some different government taking over and they'll say mm, all the people who used to uh, uh, promote uh, smoking cannabis, you know, have to go to jail now. And, and all the people who used to uh, cheer for alcohol also go to jail because, of course, alcohol is sometimes being banned in the States. It was banned sometimes, I think, in the 1920s or 30s or something. And cannabis was legal. So that's the case where giving away too much data to those in authority is something you might not realize the consequences to until later on when you see them pulling it from the future. Uh, so that that's the, the, the point I'm trying to get across to people. What you might be doing now is absolutely legal now, but you don't know what's going to happen in 10 years, in 20 years, and they will still have your data, and they will go after you. Uh, the Japanese, when they invaded a company, a, a country like Singapore, they tried to flag all the people who are supposedly anti-Japanese, mostly Chinese people, and they executed all of them based upon whatever evidence they thought they had. So that's kind of like a mind police where the penalty is not jail time, it's death. You know, so, so people have to learn some history on, on, on what intelligence services are doing when they identify a threat. It's not just the intern, in, intern, internment camps for uh, American Japanese people, which was then based on nationality. It can be a mind control thing where they flag people upon their obedience to governance and so political opinions. And they can treat them differently based upon these criteria. So don't give too much data to c companies that will even tell you in advance that they have no policy 
for destroying this data. In fact, they love, they thrive in keeping this data because they have these new startups around, you know, data mining and will find out what your customers want and what they think and who they're connected with. And you're supplying.